live from the National News Studio, Sri Lanka. Bringing you the news from Sri Lanka and across the world, it's a national news broadcast on Sri Lanka Rupavahini Corporation. I'm Siobhan Pereira. And I'm Kasni Balishan Radhikari. Here are your top stories for tonight. Upholding law and order upholds human rights, affirms President. National minimum wage increases to 17,500 rupees. Central Bank Governor says he will not resign from his post despite objections raised on the recent salary hike. Legislation for a digital economic transformation will be presented to the Parliament by mid this year. A US bridge collapses after being hit by a Colombo bound ship, 20 missing. Sri Lanka achieves a historic football victory, live telecast of two other international tournaments on national television. And we move on to those and other stories in detail. And in your top local story tonight, President Rani Vikramasinghe emphasized the necessity of preserving law and order in the country, highlighting the crucial steps taken to safeguard state property, including the parliament, from violence orchestrated under the guidance of the struggle. Now, these sentiments were expressed during a meeting convened at the presidential secretariat where university lecturers gathered to discuss the nation's current economic program. President Vikramasinghe has stressed the importance of fostering a conductive and conducive atmosphere where the university system for effective in implementation of the new reforms. <laughs> President Rani Vikramasinghe has stressed the importance of fostering a conducive atmosphere within the university system for the effective implementation of these reforms, reflecting on recent protests during the atten his attendance to the Kalania University inauguration, the President reaffirmed his commitment to fulfilling his responsibilities. President Rani Vikram Singh emphasized the necessity of preserving law and order in the country, highlighting the crucial steps taken to safeguard state properties from violence orchestrated under the guise of a struggle. Despite criticism labeling these actions as human rights violations, the president asserted that such measures were imperative for preventing economic instability, stressing the importance of maintaining law and order, particularly in the aftermath of challenging times. President Vikramasinghe underscored the collective responsibility of all parties in upholding societal order. These sentiments were expressed during a meeting convened at the Presidential Secretariat where university lecturers gathered to discuss the nation's current economic program. President Vikramasinghe also revealed ongoing government efforts to implement a new educational system with a dedicated committee chaired by the Prime Minister's secretary tasked with this initiative. One of the lecturers pointed out that ensuring adherence to national laws within the university education is essential and inquired the effective implementation of these laws. The president said that this task transcends government efforts alone and it necessitates collective action. Regrettably, he said that there is a concerning silence from some quarters largely stemming from systemic issues dating back to the 80s. He said that they must not revert to past shortcomings, but urgently develop a new educational framework suited to the nation requiring broad support. Moreover, university life should not solely focus on enrollment. Graduation, fostering debate is also equally vital. While political discussions were once commonplace on campuses, this atmosphere is now scarce. He added, the president pointed out that restoring the discourse is imperative. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka decides to further reduce the policy interest rates. The relevant decision has been reached during the Monetary Board meeting held yesterday. 
the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate have been reduced by 50 basis points to 8.5 percent and 9.5 percent respectively this decision has been reached following a comprehensive assessment of current and expected domestic and international economic development to maintain inflation at the targeted level of five percent over the medium term while enabling the economy to reach its potential the board also underscored the need for a swift and full pass through of monetary easing measures to accelerate the normalization of market interest rates in the period ahead have decided to reduce the policy interest rates by 50 basis points accordingly standing deposit facility will be 8.5 percent and standing lending facility will be 9.5 percent statutory reserve ratio will remain at the current level of 2%. There were several factors taken into consideration before the board arrived at the yesterday's decision. So board arrived at this decision after careful consideration of ma many factors. Among others, the following were the major factors considered. Continued subdued uh, aggregate demand conditions in the economy and lesser than expected impact of recent changes to the value added tax and uh, the removal of exemptions of value added tax on inflation and well anchored inflation expectations, the absence of excessive pressures coming from external sector outlook and also the need to continue downward trajectory on market interest rate, especially the market lending rate. Headline inflation has moderated in February compared to January. It has declined from 6.4% recorded in January to 5.9% in February which was mainly supported by the reduction in non-food inflation category. Even though year-on-year -year food inflation increased in February, on a monthly basis, and a reduction has been observed, so that indicates that food prices are easing in the recent months. And another point to note is that co-inflation uh, continued to remain subdued uh, at the level 2.8% in February. Also, the realized inflation during the first two months have been uh, mainly because of the impact of fat has been lower than what was previously envisaged. So uh, with this, the near term, the medium term outlook for inflation remains at the preferred level. So inflation is expected to converge to the targeted level in the period ahead. On the economic growth side, uh, as you all are aware that a recovery has been observed in the domestic economic activity as expected. Accordingly, a notable growth has been observed in the fourth quarter of 2024, uh, breaking from six months of uh, six quarters of consecutive quarters of contraction. Economy recorded 1.6% growth in uh, third quarter of 2023 and further increase of 4.5% growth in the last quarter of 2023. This has helped to limit the overall contraction of the year to 2.3% compared to 7.3% recorded in 2022. So this growth momentum is expected to continue in the upcoming quarters as well. Governor of Central Bank of Sri Lanka the last year, Mudal Pati Pati Vivarani. The last year, We obvious our position is that this is not good for credit supply, even to the MSME, SME, because uh, if the banks see there are some restrictions for them to recover, uh, the money they have lent out to depositors, they will be reluctant to lend for new lenders, lenders or their price or interest rates uh, will have some premium for the inability to recover. That's, they will be much more cautious. That's why our position has been that uh, debt recovery process should be improved further without suspending. But the British government has taken a decision to suspend only for six months. I don't think that will have a significant impact hopefully. So that's why we are basically uh, pushing banks to bring down interest rates and supply more credit and also I think uh, the legislation banks have some leeway for them to take. The, the governor put, also put said back, that he will back not back resign from his post the despite the objections raised on the recent salary hike. The uh, this salary revision was done in according, according with the existing laws. That has been done for several years since 1950 by the central bank boards. Independently, salaries, were, salaries and wages of these central bank employees were determined by the boards, successive boards.
there's nothing wrong and it's nothing illegal that i want to make it very clear in same way uh, and second one what has happened since the last increase there was a discussion at the parliament what has given by the new act we are more accountable to the parliament so that accountability provision uh, we have requested parliament to uh, you know and the accountability we have reported it then parliament has come out uh with some recommendations because of the accountability that comes with the responsibility as well that's why we have to adhere to what has been recommended by the parliament they are it clearly says appoint a committee to review this and then after the appointment of this committee within 4 weeks they have to submit a report back to the parliament to the minister of finance that process will take place so what will happen under the process there will be independent committee appointed by the minister i think that will happen soon with after that for its time they will submit then uh, we can see the outcome of that now in more local news the cabinet of ministers granted approval to revise the national minimum salary accordingly the national minimum salary will be increased by 5000 rupees from 12500 rupees to 17500 rupees The relevant proposal was forwarded by Minister Manushan Nana Kara. Accordingly, the Employees National Minimum Wages Act of Number no. Three of 2016 will be revised. The Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal presented by Minister Bandulu Gunawardena to shift the daily operations and management of expressways to Sahasya Investment Limited from April 1. The cabinet of ministers granted approval to the president to the draftsman to draft a bill in order to suspend the special commodity act number no. 48 of 2007 cabinet spokesman minister bandulu gunawardena says if a certain entity is attempting to revise the imf conditions for their political gains then it is not a na- rather it is a national tragedy the minister made these remarks by responding to a query raised by journalists during the cabinet meeting held today Minister Bandar Gunawardena said that if an entity is attempting to revise the extended fund facility reached with the IMF then such entities will not be able to govern the country for at least 2 weeks he said that following a potential change in the agreement no country will issue letters of credit on behalf of Sri Lanka resulting in lack of imports such as fertilizer medicine crude oil chemicals and machinery he said that if such an entity assumes they could govern the country by not agreeing to international terms and norms and attempt to revise them to their whims and wants then that is the beginning of a national tragedy a journalist inquired whether there are whether there are any conf- confidential terms in the IMF agreement which were not revealed The minister said that the terms and conditions related to an IMF agreement should be presented to its director board and then will be available on their website. He said that the World Bank, IMF and Asian Development Bank sought for transparency in the engagement. President Rani Vikramasinghe says that the legislation to establish a digital transformation agency and an artificial intelligence center will be presented to the parliament by mid of this year he emphasized that this legislative and policy framework is crucial for sri lanka to become a competitive economy especially as the indian ocean region emerges as a key growth area president wickremesinghe made these remarks while delivering the keynote speech at the digital public infrastructure seminar today at the taj samudra hotel in colombo on digital public infrastructure co-organized by the high commission of india in colombo and the ministry of technology government of sri to explore the transformative potential of digital public infrastructure for enabling service delivery inclusivity and enriching the economy by driving innovation highlighting the achievement of stabilizing the economy and on ongoing negotiations with international creditors president wickremesinghe outlined the government's economic transformation agenda during the meeting he also underscored the importance of digital infrastructure in modernizing agriculture addressing multidimensional poverty and reforming the education system we have now reached a stage where we can confidently claim to have stabilized the economy we've come to those agreements with the imf and we are talking to the occ the official creditor committee to china 
and to the private creditors. Where do we go from there? We have stabilized an economy which is import dependent. You can't go on forever with an import dependent economy. Therefore, we made our decisions and I want to present it to Parliament in the form of legislation. The economic transformation. To begin with, the economic transformation will be firstly to an export-oriented, highly competitive digital economy to a green economy. Then we will set out the targets and the years of our achievement and send it to Parliament. And certainly by early May you will have it before you in the Public Finance Committee. But since we have now decided what course we are taking to have the discussion at the start of what should be a digital economy certainly is for us quite useful. Sri Lanka has had what I call a patchwork economy. You take pieces together and then sew it together. So now we are trying to move this out into what we should. So a discussion on the digital public infrastructure certainly is useful at this stage. Firstly, we are now discussing the new institutional framework for a digital economy. We've been having IT councils and computer and information technology. We've had others. None of them really delivered the results. And it was a question and looking at micro projects and technical advances. So we are moving out of that. To build a digital economy, we are going into a digital transformation agency. The total transformation of digital economy and together with that, the technical and the technological know-how that goes with it. So that is the first part. Within it, there's also going to be another center called the AI center because digital transformation after debate we decided that digital transformation must go hand in hand with artificial intelligence. They should not be separate. They should be an autonomous institution under the digital transformation agency. This year we have set aside a billion rupees and the work is starting. And I want to bring the legislation to parliament by June this year, the latest. Sri Lanka has to become a very competitive economy. We are coming into a region which will be the growth region in the next few decades. A shift from Japan and China towards the Indian Ocean. And we have India which will grow fast and Sri Lanka next week. So what is the connectivity that we achieve and what do we do in the field of the digital infrastructure? India's own journey stands as a testimony to the power of DPI, the digital transformation in India over the last decade or so has been driven by these interoperable and open protocols of DPI. India's DPI journey started with a basic need to provide direct access to public services and government benefits to our citizens. This is what gave the birth to India's digital identity number or Aadhaar and the unique identification authority of India in 2016. We also see DPI now in our bilateral joint statements as also in the India-Sri Lanka vision document adopted by our leaders during the visit of His Excellency President Ranil Vikramasinghe to India in July 2023. Both our leaders then agreed to leverage India's DPI in accordance with Sri Lanka's requirements and priorities towards effective and efficient delivery of citizen-centric services to the people of Sri Lanka. We have already rolled out the UPI in Sri Lanka last month and we are now working with the government of Sri Lanka to roll out the unique digital identity project based on MOSIP in architecture. And we strongly believe that as in the case of India, this UDI is not an end, rather the beginning of the digital magic for Sri Lanka. The value proposition of DPI is the combination of three components, technology, governance and markets to achieve sustainable and robust digital transformation. 
Prime Minister Vinesh Gunavathana called upon the Sri Lankan community abroad to get involved in the current economic drive of the motherland by sharing their professional experiences and adopting innovative methods created in their respective fields. He made these remarks during a meeting with Sri Lankan professionals residing in China. Speaking at a meeting held at the Embassy of Sri Lanka in Beijing, he said that he was amazed by the high professional standards reached by expatriate Sri Lankans in new emerging fields like artificial intelligence, information technology and digitalization. Large gathering of top Sri Lankan entrepreneurs and professionals along with State Minister Shahan Semasinghe and Chinese ministers attended the meeting. China today is the second largest economy in the world. Why I said for human history, 50 years ago, the situation was not so. All the planners, all the researchers, all the economists, China has been able not only to change and advance the nation to a key giant in the world, but also influence the world affairs. So it's an important moment for President Ranil Vikramasinghe and our government to enhance our relationship in China. I'm very proud as Prime Minister to meet you all, especially when you get up and say I'm, I'm in research, I'm in business, I'm t uh, handling uh, various projects. It's a challenge met by our countrymen, for which we owe you all much as we move along because Sri Lanka also needs to engage uh, in, with the Chinese economy in many aspects import export research or in the services or in decision making as professor mentioned in economic management academic work these are the new areas that is opening up so we look forward for you all my acting ambassador would allow me to say you are all our ambassadors. The network has to move fast. A program has been initiated to improve the dry chilies production in the Mahavali zones. This has been implemented under the Mahavali Water Security Investment Program. With the economic contraction in the country, the Mahavali Authority initiated a special program for the development of the agrarian food sector. This has been titled as Agri-Products and Productivity Enhancement Program. This has been initiated encompassing Mahavali B, C, D, G, H and Hurlu zones. Asian Development Bank provides financial assistance for the program jointly with Mahavali Water Security Investment Program. With the intention to improve the chilies production, 600 smart agricultural kits were distributed among farmer communities with each kit valued at 600,000 rupees. The covers provided through this kit can cover up to a quarter of one acre land. The project is expected to produce 2,500 kilograms of green chili and 1,000 kilograms of dry chili. The expected revenue from this project is estimated at 1.5 million to 2.5 million rupees. The annual dry chilies requirement in the country is at 50,000 metric tons, out of which 10% is produced locally. The objective of the project is to reduce the dry chilies imports to the country in an effort to limit the outflow of foreign exchange. Production of chili seeds is being carried out in parallel to this program. 50 agricultural kits have been distributed among the farmers in this regard at a cost of 2 million rupees. And we'll be right back after a short break. Stay tuned. Back. 
Police media spokesman DIG Nihal Talbua says that special security measures will be implemented at churches across the country in view of the upcoming Good Friday and Easter Sunday. He made these remarks during a media briefing held in Colombo today. Police media spokesman DIG Nihal Taldua said that the IGP has directed all officers, including senior deputy inspectors general of police DIG officers in charge of police divisions to ensure enhanced security in these areas. He said that the government agents of the relevant areas are expected to collaborate with priests to develop tailored security plans for the identified areas, including churches. Meanwhile, the police media spokesman also made these remarks regarding the arrival of the former president Maitri Pali Sirisena to the CID. Police media spokesman DIG Nihal Thadua said that a statement was recorded for nearly five and a half hours. He said that the investigations have already been commenced and the advice of the Attorney General will be sought with the progress of the investigations. In more local news, senior advice to the President on national security and Chief of Presidential Staff Sagla Ratnaga says that for a country to progress towards development, it must implement a successful education system. He shared these thoughts yesterday during the ceremony where the newly constructed two-story building was handed over to the students of Ilukpitya Kanishta Vidyale in Kotapola, Matra. The newly constructed building of the Ilukpeti Akanishta Vidyali in Kotapola Matra was funded entirely by the 1981 group of the Royal College Union Colombo with the support of the 12 Engineer Services Regiment troops. Pre Senior Advisor to the President on National Security, the Chief of Presidential Staff Sagal Ratnayaka said that the importance of a successful education system in driving a country towards development cannot be overstated. Without such a system in place, a nation's success is compromised. While creating educational programs is accessible to many, he said that the key lies effectively in managing human resources to implement these programs. Reflecting on past challenges, he said that such as economic collapse and fuel source shortages underscores the necessity of proactive leadership. President Rani Vikramasinghe, assuming leadership during a crucial period, spearheaded efforts to rescue the country from economic turmoil. The senior advisor to the president said that the president's collaboration with the International Monetary Fund and diligent work significantly contributed to improving the country's economic status. A new program aimed at ushering the transformative economic challenges in Sri Lanka is deemed necessary. To achieve this, the President has initiated a series of reforms. One significant step is making the Central Bank of Sri Lanka an independent institution which is now accountable to both the nation and its citizens. Moreover, he said that every institution is expected to uphold accountability to the country and its people. Minister Mahinda Maravira says a cabinet paper will be tabled to reduce the electricity tariffs on agricultural activities of the farmers in the northern province. The minister made these remarks during a program held in Kilinochi. He made these remarks while taking part in the opening of the model garden and the jumbo peanut production factory in Akkarayan Kunam, Kilinochi. 200 farmers are currently engaging in agricultural activities at this technological model garden. This project has been initiated targeting local and foreign markets. A passion fruit cultivation is also underway at the garden with the ability to gain a high yield using technological methods. Also, the peanut harvest of 500 farmers in Karachi and Kandavalai villages in Kilinochi are being used for the jumbo peanut factory. Minister Mahinda Maravira said that the President is expecting to provide 100 million rupees for each district secretariat, which will be distributed among four divisional secretariats. He said that the President has also instructed to allocate provisions for the northern province without any discrimination, as the majority in the province is inter interested in engaging in agricultural activities. Sri Lanka Railway Station Masters Association says the Secretary to the Ministry of Tra Transport has not issued statements targeting any private company. In a statement, the association has said that errors have been found in the railway seat reservation system. They have claimed that this has occurred due to the failure to direct necessary action and instructions to Mobitel. The statement has further indicated that the Sri Lanka Railway Station Masters Association has no objections for converting the entire system into an online system within a correct manner. Now in more local news, the ground constructed at Sri Parakramabaho School in Narayampeter was vested with the studentship recently. 
The ground was constructed at a cost of 50 million rupees under the provisions of the Western Provincial Council. Sri Lanka Air Force provided the technological and labor support for this initiative. The opening ceremony was held with the participation of Governor of the Western Province, Marshal of the Air Force Roshan Gunatilaka and Air Force Commander Air Marshal Udeni Rajapaksa. The ground will be available for the use of the school children in the respective educational division. Veteran artist uh, Chandra Kumar Kandarachi passed away this morning. He was 76 years of age at his demise. He was hospitalized for treatment due to an illness. Entering the field of music in the 70s, late Kandarachi was immensely popular among the public for his songs. Among his many hits, Agesin Havatahanam, Pem Bandha, Sita Bandha, Ganga Nadi Tire Di Eda, Gamma Mahanwarai, and Sat Dinakin Obe Katahanda were fan favorites at the time. The funeral arrangements of the late Chandra Kumar Kandanarachi is to be announced in time. Foreign news coming up right away. News tonight, United States media reports a major bridge in the United States city of Baltimore has collapsed into the Patabasco River after a container ship crashed into it today morning. The Baltimore Bridge has collapsed, causing vehicles and people to plunge into the water. Authorities stated that a huge search operation was going going through for at least seven people while two people have been rescued the ship is now wedged into debris from the francis scott key bridge which is around three kilometers long and part of a major highway some workers were reported to be on the bridge preparing potholes at the time it collapsed officials declare that there's no indication that the incident was intentional but it is too early to determine what caused it Prima Kutumi, Pantamai. And in your sports news tonight, Sri Lanka managed to clinch an international victory in football after a gap of three years. The Sri Lankan football team snatched this victory after defeating Bhutan two goals to near. Shamari from Qatar as well as from Qatar, Khaled Aid Khalaf Faisal and Pereira. A four-nation football tournament organized by FIFA is currently underway in Sri Lanka. Here is a chance for Bhutan, but comfortably seen through by first ever world. Accordingly, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Papua New Guinea, and Central Africa Republic are competing in this tournament. Yesterday's match was played between Sri Lanka and Bhutan at the race course grounds in Colombo. More than 6,000 spectators were present to witness the encounter. Both sides failed to score in the first half. Well, 
does not care. Yeah. 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 And Oliver Kellard rising up to the occasion. However, at the beginning of the second half, Sri Lanka's Dilan De Silva opened the scoring, giving one nil lead to Sri Lanka. What a day it has been for Sri Lanka as they secure a magnificent victory. In the 55th minute, Oliver James scored the second goal for Sri Lanka, calling the Sri Lanka won the match by two goals to nil. Sri Lanka managed to record a victory against Bhutan after 10 years. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's veteran midfielder Mohamed Fazal retired from international football after representing the nation for long, a long 16 years. And the senior side, Mohamed Fazal, is one of the most celebrated football players in the country. He has always made. Unfortunately, as you see, the team photograph taken along with Mohamed Fazal. The national television has obtained the rights for the live telecast of two international tournaments. Accordingly, the FIBA Asian Basketball Championships will be live telecast on Channel I from tomorrow. The FIBA 3-on-3 three Asia Cup 2024 will be held in Singapore. The tournament participated by 23 countries will be held from tomorrow until the 31st of this month. All the matches of the tournament will telecast live on the national television. Meanwhile, the national television has also obtained the rights of the Under-19 Tri-Nation Cricket Tournament scheduled to be held in Sri Lanka. Accordingly, Sri Lanka will compete against England and Australia in the tournament, which will be held at the Surya Bhava International Cricket Stadium in Hambantota. The tournament will begin on the 28th of this month. The tournament will consist of 60 20 matches. Subsequently, three one-day international matches will be held at the Gaul International Cricket Stadium. Sri Lanka has been named the host for this year's edition of the Asia Women's Cricket Championship. The tournament will be held at the Dambul International Cricket Stadium from the 19th of July up until the 28th. The preliminary round will be held under two groups and Sri Lanka will compete in Group B. Prima Stella Set Yogurt Jai Ganna, Vedi Venna And that's a look at your news here at Sri Lanka Rupohan Corporation. I'm Shivan Pereira together with Kasuni Balachandra Adhikari. Wishing you a pleasant evening. Take care. Good night.